Hi again and welcome to this uh, fifth video of the series of the skill sets that we need to cover in here of seven steps to become a network marketing professional. This is the part of helping prospects become a good customer or a distributor slash associate in your business. Again, we are going to uh, add that into the category of education so that you actually uh, keep on uh, putting your knowledge base um, higher ranked and you know and get more more into your brain so you really can uh, filter it out and become a super leader and leverage your business and grow exponentially with whatever you're doing. Okay, let's get on here and let you know that it's again a part of the uh, Eric Worre book and um, just you know you know the drill by now and uh, we just need to get further on with Eric and let him take off with this next uh, skill set number five. Skill number five, how to close. How to close. This one freaks people out. For the professional, closing, closing is a natural byproduct of following up. You're going to follow up. You're going to ask some questions. Attempt to close. If you can, fine. If you can't, next exposure. You're going to go from exposure to exposure to exposure to exposure, condensing them as much as possible. That Your goal is education and understanding, not getting someone. You need good posture in closing, which takes a little bit of work, and you need to ask good questions. You need to ask good questions. Got it? No, it went kind of quick. How the pros approach it. One, they are emotionally detached when they're in the closing process. They're looking to help a person make a positive decision for themselves. Two, their goal is education and understanding. Three, they are extremely assumptive. They're genuinely shocked when a person doesn't want to join. They're like, what, really? They're just assuming. Their language is assuming. Most amateurs don't realize it, but they are apologizing the entire time. They're apologizing when they're inviting. They're apologizing when they're answering questions. They're apologizing when they're following up. They're apologizing when they're closing, and they're wondering why they're not getting results. They're apologizing all the time. Think about your language and your posture. They also know people are joining them. A lot of, lot of you are saying, you know, hey, come check out my product. Some of you are saying, hey, come check out my opportunity. But you know what leaders kind of say? In addition to that, come join me. Come join us. Let's do it together. One plus one adds up to five. One plus one adds up to ten. We could do some amazing things together. They know that the prospect needs some, e some emotional security blanket that you're committed. You can't just, they have to have some belief in you, like Mike said. You know, they have to believe that that leader is going to be somebody that they can respect and that they can do business with. They don't have to be exactly the same as, but leaders know that people are joining them. And leaders are always prepared. When it comes to closing, I mean, you see somebody after a presentation, after a meeting, and they got a prospect who's interested, and they're like, where's my stuff? I, you know, uh, do you have one of those brochures? Do you have a CD? Do you have an application? Do you have this? Do you have, do you have a product sample? I, I, I don't have. I... Amateurs do that. Professionals don't. They're just ready. They got their packets. They got their products. They are good to go. Always prepared. And they ask great questions. They just ask great questions. So let's talk about those questions. Immediately after any exposure, I'm going to give you a few questions. There's a lot of questions that you can ask and you can go after. I've found that if you can reduce them down to as, as few as possible that everybody does on the team, it's better for you. Amateurs say, hey, what did you think? I said that for years. I was confused why I wasn't getting good results. 
Asking what did you think invites the critic. What did you think? Well, you know, I've... And, and it, it invites the objection. Professionals ask leading questions. Did it make sense? Pretty exciting, isn't it? What did you like best about what you just saw? That's my favorite. What did you like best about what you just saw? Some people like to say, what do you like more, the product or the opportunity? My favorite of all of these is what did you like best? You watched the DVD. Did you see the DVD? Yes. What did you like best? Did you listen to the CD? Yes. What did you like best? Did you listen to the conference call? Yes. What did you like best? Did you watch the webinar? Yes. What did you like best? Did you see the online video? Yes. What did you like best? They will tell you. And it's going to be generally positive. What did you like best? Follow-up question I like. I like a lot. Oops. Hold on. This one's missing. But here's the, here's the question. Follow-up question I like. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you don't have any interest and in 10 being you're ready to get going right this second, where are you? Where do you see yourself? And I wait for the answer. So if I go to Adriana, Adriana, what'd you like best about what you just saw? Give me an answer. Pick, you know, make something up. Seems like people are making money. So let me ask you a question. Scale of 1 to 10, 1, you have no interest at all in even pursuing this any farther, and 10, you're kind of excited about it. You may, maybe like to do something with this. Where do you see yourself? Yeah, where are you? 1 to 10. 6. Now, anything over a one is good. <laughs> I'm serious. What does a two say? There's a chance, but you have to convince me. There's some work you got to do before I'm ready to pull the trigger here. I've got some serious doubts, but I'm not closing the door. One closes the door. So if they say a two, you just say, well, what, you know, what can I do to help you get to a three or a four or a five? Well, I need to know more about the product. I need to check this thing out. I need to see if it's for real. I got to do this. I got to do that. And then you just set up the next exposure to do that. If they say a six, seven, eight, and they say it with a little bit of energy, I go right into a four-question process that I've used for 20 years. This little four question close at the end of an exposure will get you more results than you can even believe. And it's learnable. All of you can learn it. Question number one. Based upon what you've just seen, if you were to get started with this company on a part-time basis, let me ask you this question, Adriana. Based upon what you just saw, you said you're a six on a scale of one to 10. If you were to get started, just hypothetically, on a part-time basis, about how much would you need to make per month in order to make it worth your time? About 3000 I don't say, hey, would you like to make 10000 a month? I don't say that. You'll be surprised at how low these numbers are when you ask people. If you were to get started part-time, well, how much would you need to make in order to make it worth your time? Well, 500 a month, 1000 a month, 2000 a month, whatever. Okay? Simple question. Question's in the book, too, so you'll be able to take a look at it any time. Number two, Adriana, about how many hours a week could you commit to developing that kind of income? Five or ten hours a week to develop a $3,000 a month income? Okay, fair enough, because you work 80 hours a week, you say? Question number three, how many months would you work those kind of hours in order to be able to get to your $3,000 a month? Have to happen pretty fast? Yeah? Do you mind asking me, uh, uh, letting me know how much you make with your 80 hours a week right now? About 80,000 a year. So you're making about 6,500 a month working 80 hours a week, and you want to make 3,000 a month working five hours a week, and it has to happen pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. 
I just want to be real with you. You know, we might need to adjust some of those expectations or something, you know. You know I just, I'm just trying to understand where you're at. You know what I mean? I want to help. Okay? So let's, how many months would you be willing to commit, five to ten hours a week, to develop a $3,000 monthly income? Nine. Nine months. Fantastic. So question number four, if I could show you how to develop an income of $3,000 per month, working about five to ten hours a week over the course of the next nine months, would you ready, be ready to get started? Sure. Now, how do you show them? You pull out your compensation plan, you give them a little game plan that shows them how to be able to get that kind of income, which every one of you should be able to do. Not hard. You've got to get X number of people. You're going to you know, get to this rank, get to that rank, make these different things happen. You work out a game plan. Five to ten hours a week is how many 15-minute blocks? You know, 20 to 40 15-minute blocks that you could spend over the course of a week in order to be able to develop that type of income, you can put together a game plan and make that happen. All right, I'm excited for you, Adriana. This is going to be fun. Okay? So I'll start over, and I'll use Albert here. Albert, based upon what you've just seen, if you were to get started with this thing on a part-time basis, about how much would you need to earn per month in order to make it worth your time? At least 500 bucks a month. Fantastic. How many hours a week do you think you could commit to doing that? to developing that kind of income? Uh, probably about five, five, six hours. Five, six hours a week. And how many months would you be willing to work that five, six hours a week building up that $500 a month income? A couple months. Couple months? All right. So if I could show you how to develop that $500 a month over the next couple months, working five, six hours a week, would you be ready to get started? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? I'm just giving him his answers back to him. I'm asking him what he would call success in this business. When I ask question number one, how much would you need to earn per month in order for you to rearrange your life and to take on something new? How, the, the reason why in order to make this worth your time is such an important part of this question is because they got to go, okay, what would be worth my time? The distraction, what I got to do with family, what I got to do with my job, I got to put in that, some extra stuff. And they come up with a number in their brain that would justify it. And they go, go, click, 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 nope, that's not enough for the distraction. Click, 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 nope, that's not enough for the distraction. Click, 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 okay, that's the number that would be worth it. $3,000, $5,000, $6,000. Okay, fantastic. Then how many hours a week could you commit to develop, developing that $6,000 a month? And they go, hmm, I can move this here, I can move this there, I can make this happen. Okay, I'd, you know, I'd give it 10 hours a week, I'd give it 20 hours a week, whatever it is. How many months would you be willing to do that? Okay, I've got to be reasonable here, I've got to give it a little bit of a commitment, I can't expect instant results. I've got to, hmm, all right, I'd give it a year, give it a year. If I could show you how to get everything that you want. Are you ready to go? Well, yeah, you're showing me how to get what I want. I'm ready to go. Now, they're either going to be ready to go or they're going to go, um, I got to talk to my spouse. I'm just not sure about the time. I just don't know about the money. It's the holidays. I got to pay for Christmas. I got to figure out how I'm going to do all this stuff. You say, you know, listen, no pressure, no drama, don't worry about it. What can I do to help you become a little bit more comfortable and just move them to the next exposure? And after that next exposure, help them ask the questions again. Maybe the, the, the answers adjust a little bit. Then move them to the next exposure, ask them the questions again. Your job is to ask the questions and help them come up with a decision that they want, not one that you want. You want to make $50,000 a month? You want to make $20,000 a month? You want to change your life? You want to walk away from your job? Well, maybe they don't. You don't know. These four questions will liberate you and will liberate them. Okay? If their expectations are unrealistic, you've got, you got to just say they're unrealistic. You've got to either change your income goal, your hours goal, or your month's goal, but I can't show you how to get to $10,000 a month working one hour a week over the course of the next three weeks. I can't do it. 
You, gotta, you, you can have your 10,000, but it might be more hours or more months to get there. Again, what would a consultant say if somebody was unrealistic? You're unrealistic. I can help you. I'm not saying that your vision isn't possible, but we have to adjust some things to be able to get there. So it's four things. How much money? How many hours? How many months? If I would you. Okay? All right. Here's what I want you to do. Make a quick note in your, quick, quick little uh, outline in your notes. Question number one, or just point number one, what did you like best? Number two, one to ten. And then these four things. What did you like best? One to ten, and then these four things. One, two, three, four. Okay. I need you to do something for me. Everybody, I need you to swear a solemn oath. This word needs to go away. I don't want you talking about the industry of network marketing anymore. Let it go. Erase that word. And I'm going to tell you why. If you replace that word with profession, the ripple effect in your organization will be so radical and so massive you won't even be able to measure it. Talking about our industry does one thing, but when you talk about our profession, the profession of network marketing, the career path of network marketing, this is a group of professionals, not just a group of people stuck in an industry. Let go of industry. Throw it away. Play a game where you got to put a dollar in the cookie jar every time you say industry. Let it go. Kill that, kill that word. Replace it with profession. Watch what happens. Watch your group pride grow. Watch the, watch the aspiration of people to become professional grow. Let go of industry. That's become pervasive in network marketing. And we need to be focused on our profession. Why did we start Network Marketing Pro in the first place? To try and raise the level of professionalism from this little backstreet hucksters to a real career. So the skills that I'm teaching you today are about career skills. They're about profession skills. The amateur just throws a bunch of stuff up against the wall, sees what happened. The professional says, I'm going to learn how to find people with an unending ability. I'm going to learn how to invite them and teach them with a process that's simple and makes sense. Direct, indirect, super indirect, eight steps. If I would you, I'm going to confirm it. I'm going to follow up, do what I said I was going to do. If I get questions and objections, I'm ready for them. I know exactly what to do. Question, story, story, question. I'm good to go. When it comes to closing, I'm going to ask six questions. Did it make sense? See what I'm saying? What else did you learn in this process? Any other distinctions? Yeah. Your sponsor used this on you when you, when you started with your company? Gave you ownership. Made you feel like you're in control. Sure. You don't even set them. They set them. You know what you'll find is they'll be way, way more realistic than you will. In real life. Because they're used to, if they're going to take a part-time job, what are they expecting to make in a part-time job? 20 bucks an hour? Let's say 20 or less for a part-time job. They're not going to throw out an expectation where all of a sudden they're making $50, $100 an hour. They, they won't be able to do it with integrity. So they'll set something based on, okay, how many hours? What do I want to make? All right, you know, let me add that up. Eh. If, if you can show somebody they can make 50 bucks an hour, which they can make in network marketing, you know, 250 a week, working five hours a week, they can do that. That's doable, right? You know, most of them won't believe you, but yeah, question. Insight. Or insight, yeah. If they give you anything that's unreasonable, say, you know, look, I'd love to help you, but one of your numbers needs to change. You've got to change the number of hours you're working. You've got to change the number of months. You've got to change the amount. 
you know, and, and like I said with Adriana, she, she told me she was working 80 hours a week to earn $6,500 a month, but she wanted to work five hours a week and earn an extra $3,000 a month, and it had to happen fast. I was like, what? How long did it take you to build up to your $6,500 a month working 80 hours a week? How, how many months did you give that? No, I know, but how many, oh, you just made it up? No, I just made it up. Okay, okay, okay. She just gave me an example. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> The, the cross-examination of Adriana has concluded. Uh, <laughs> leave her alone. Sorry. Uh, I wouldn't do it with the group. I wouldn't do it with the group. This is something you do individually. Somebody doesn't, this is a personal thing. You know, you're going to be asking people for their own personal path. You know, if I've got multiple people at the end of a presentation, I'm going to say, you know, look, let's set up a time for each of us to talk. And when we talk, or I pull them aside, and let me ask you a couple of questions based, you know, based upon what you just saw. You know, what would you like best? Based upon what you just saw, 1 to 10, off we go. Yeah. She's asking, what if you're talking to a veteran in the industry and, and you're not, you're, they're not sure if your company can deliver on their expectations? Just have to have an honest conversation. You know, there's two kinds of companies in network, Mark, or if, many kinds, but there's the two extremes. One company, you can make a lot of money up front and the residual is very low and it takes forever to develop. Other companies, there's a lot of residual from day one and it takes longer to be able to develop your income. And there's everything in between. There's no right, there's no wrong, but you just got to ask a person what they want based upon their experience, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's, there's, everybody pays the same amount. It's just different kinds of compensation structures based upon different immediate gratification, delayed gratification, more residual, long-term passive, or less passive and get more money up front. Who knows what's right, what's wrong? Everybody makes their own decision, okay? So just have the conversation. All right, one more. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You felt very comfortable if they weren't ready to go, just moving them, if I would, you to the next exposure. Do you see how these little hooks, you have a little if I would you that you can, you can fall back on no matter what. You've got a little question, question or story that you can fall back on no matter what. You see what I mean? Just some structure, some little structure. Now, we just did one exercise on this. How many people feel significantly more confident after one exercise? What if you practiced that and taught that in your trainings and you spent 10 minutes teaching people how to help the person make a positive decision at the end of an exposure? 10 minutes. Would that impact your organization? Could you create a video on that, put it on YouTube, have people watch it? On each one of these skills? Could you, when this book comes out, make sure people get the book and they study that, that one chapter that's probably 10 pages long that covers all of the psychology of how that thing works? Sure. A few bucks. Oh, wow. Again, super stuff here. And um, again, it's great to see Eric again from stage, you know, for us to experience it live in uh, 2012 in Vegas. We are pumped and ready to get into Vegas uh, this year, uh, here 2013, to get in there as well. So let's just uh, tick off this video right now and uh, make sure we have that ticked off on our list to video number five and get ready for video number six, which is helping your di new distributor, new uh, associate to get started right things that we already are going on with here. So uh, Networks Go Pro, you find the next video there. See you inside.